We have to address something that we believe strongly, and that is things like religion is silly. If our opponent has an argument against that, he can make it. We're not going to silence them. We're going to urge them to continue this discussion. But we have to be clear on our premises right from the beginning. This is, this is simply the fact of it, that uh, even non-militant atheists think a lot of religious beliefs are absurd, and we shouldn't be afraid to say so. We should be drawing this out. It's also important because uh, what often happens in the culture at large is we give this silence to them, this unwarranted deference, where we do not point out that these ideas are silly, and then people get the idea that scientists are going along with it, and we really aren't. We're being too polite. So a little rudeness, I think, is sometimes called call for to wrench open the discussion and get things going a bit more. Uh, I'd also disagree with that last bit where the, the, what we're saying is that you should listen to us to learn the truth. That's not a scientific approach at all. That's not what we're saying. That what we want to do as scientists and as secularists, as, as free thinkers, is to get people to think more. You don't have to accept what I say. What you have to do is think about it, come to your own conclusions, look at your own evidence, look at the evidence that's public avail publicly available, hear the arguments out, and weigh the stories one against the other. So that's, that's really my, my final call is let's, let's all get out there and be aggressive about our beliefs. Let's not be hiding them away. And let's get more discussion going, more argument. All right, so I understand we're going to take a little break at this point. Yes. Yes, you can come up. All right, I guess the deal is go up to the microphone so everybody can hear you. Why don't we start over here? Hello? Yeah. Well, uh, it was a, a great lecture and it's great to have you here. And of course, I do want to take issue. Uh, and I, I agree completely when you say uh, that religious people usually uh, are dogmatic and don't have good evidence and uh, don't listen to reason. But then when you say that their beliefs are untestable, I can't agree. No, it's, they are testable. Of course they're testable. Uh, the evidence is against them. Say, for example, um, well, uh, flood, uh, plague, famine, fire, pestilence, and drought. Pretty good evidence that there isn't somebody on our side running things. And if you say, oh, I can think of a possible possibility that, that, that he has a reason. Well, you know, we can imagine that disease is caused by gremlins and, and not by germs. And that the germ theory might be wrong. But it's proved. It's, uh, the fact that we, can, um, we could imagine something doesn't mean it isn't, uh, that, the, that the gremlin theory isn't disproved. And similarly, uh, for the God theory. So it is not untestable, I would urge. Oh, right. When you can pin them down to specific claims. Uh, another good example is claims about the power of prayer, which can be tested in statistical studies. And, and, and fail. But then what you quickly discover is they rush to say, well, you really didn't test the power of prayer in that particular example. Um, if, you, if you read Carl Sagan's book, uh, he's got that chapter on you know, a candle in the dark. He's got a chapter on the invisible dragon in the garage. It's a perfect example of the kind of games they play where they will constantly retreat from hypothesis. And it becomes a case where you can't really disprove their, their overall ideas, but all you can do is show that they're they're ridiculous and unscientific and that they retreat from any attempt to test them. Well, if, if they don't admit they're, that they're disproved, that it doesn't follow that they aren't disproved. True. Yes. Uh, Beasy, can you tell us uh, how happy you are with uh, the progress being made in the science of religion, that is understanding how religion makes brain ticks ah. in some people's mind? And if you think that we're going to find a cure eventually. <laughs> um, well, actually, actually the, um, there, there's a number of people who are doing some very interesting work on this. Uh, Scott Atron, for instance, David Sloan Wilson, uh, Pascal Boyer. Uh, Boyer is, is probably the one I like the best in what he's doing. And, and his answer would suggest that there cannot be a cure, because what he says is that religion is a byproduct of natural cognitive processes. That the reason we have religion is that, for instance, we have, uh, we have minds that detect agency, that we detect and, and impose beliefs about. 
agency on various phenomena around us. We have things like empathy that are, that are important to a social behavior. And you put those things together and suddenly you've got people having empathy for trees, okay? And, and revering, revering trees and that becomes the, the root of religion. And, and no, you don't want to cure that because, no, I, I'd rather not cure empathy, okay? That's a good thing in the population. Uh, what we want to do is take these natural cognitive processes and impose a, a rational position on top of them, which is, okay, I have nice deep feelings for that tree over there, but I know it's not a god, it's, it's, a, it's a plant. And, and we, can, we can layer these things on top of each other. Uh, so no cure, just more rational thinking, more education, that's my only solution. Uh, this, this isn't so much of a criticism, and I, I think you actually touched on it yourself, uh, and that is that I think in a lot of the secular talks that I've been attending, it's mostly focused on the United States and, and Christianity in particular. And um, so I think if you could comment, this is more of an open-ended question, uh, if you could comment just briefly on some of the other religions, uh, notably Islam and, and Europe, and um, what's going to happen there, what the what the clash will look like there, right. as opposed to how it played out in the States. Yes, uh, I, I, I'm admittedly provincial, and I, I focus on what I know, and, and what I know is that Christianity is a problem in the United States, right around where I live, right? and, and that's why the emphasis is there. I, I think it's, it's right to put the emphasis on, on what I know and what I experience. Um, the, the problem is of Islam. Um, well, there we, there we get into some, some deeper issues, more conflicting issues. I, I think Islam, as practice, is much worse than Christianity. It's, it's much more brutal, much more oppressive. Uh, it's a more controlling sort of religion as it's, as it's generally practiced. Uh, but at the same time, you know, there are many secular communities in the Middle East as well. And uh, th there's always this danger of, of making a sweeping, sweeping accusation against Islam that then becomes translated into a condemnation of an entire region. And, and I wouldn't want to fall into that trap. And then there's also the, the other problem that, that uh, in Europe, we've got Islam spreading, but at the same time where it's spreading is in the poorest and most deprived populations. And it's, it's become kind of a, a code word for, for just dismissing an entire ethnic group. Uh, much as in, in this country, in the United States, it was, it was a problem with African Americans who were similarly dismissed. So th that, that makes it a very tricky road for me to trade upon uh, because I'm outside that culture. And so I've always been a little bit more hesitant about jumping on Islam. Uh, but, it, but as Islam per se, as, as a religion, it's just as ridiculous as Christianity. And, and I have no hesitation there. I just have to be really careful about, about uh, in, in imposing my cultural beliefs uh, about what is a right culture on a completely different culture. I know, that sounds so wishy-washy, doesn't it? <laughs> but but uh, I'm sure if I were if I'm embedded in that culture, if I, you know, if, I, if McCain wins, maybe I'll be moving to Europe. And then you'll hear me railing much more about Islam. Yeah, I just find, sorry, I just, as, as yeah. to, to follow up, I, I just find that oftentimes we attack Christianity, which rightfully we should, and it's, it's yeah. taken a huge chunk out of the credibility of Christianity. But, you know, Europe's biggest issue right now is not being in the Church of England. I mean, it's, it's, it's likely in Holland. It's, it's not going to be, uh, you know, the threat is not from Protestants. Yeah, it's but it, 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 it. At, at the same time, uh, the Church of England is, is, is the religion of the ruling class, okay, if you want to call it that. Uh, and I, I think that religion in general, even moderate liberal religion, is a training ground for accepting silliness and accepting absurdities. And it's just as dangerous in that sense. Not, not as actively dangerous in promoting violence, for instance, but just as dangerous in softening the brains of, of young children. So. Hi. Hi. Um, one of the things that uh, say that we should encourage, and I agree, would be that people, uh, that we should encourage people to look at the evidence that's publicly available um, and come to their own conclusions. Um, part of the problem is that right now, a lot of that information, um, if you're not in academia, 